para kain mabula iya bro you're live not yet i don't see it there we are we live how you guys trust me trust me you're live we live now man how you guys how you guys brothers doing how you brothers doing you know just said you know you was live when you was talking about bula iya oh bula iya bula iya Oh my god. Oh, you follow up there. Hey, you seen that commercial? When the guy comes on, I love that commercial. Many of you ask me, what is ask me? I think you meant ask, right? <laughs> yeah, many of, yeah, may, many of you ask me. But it, I think he meant ask. How are you folks I'm doing? Sure. I'm I'm sure that's that's what uh you they meant. Anyway, hi hey, how's it guys? Hey, I'm still getting my stuff set up here as usual. Welcome, welcome, welcome on this beautiful Wednesday night. You know how I know it's Wednesday? Because that's what my calendar get right there. My calendar said it's Wednesday. No, because it's trash day. Oh. Yeah, it is trash day. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, turn off the volume here. All right, okay. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. So what's up, Charles? How was your day today, man? It was quite entertaining, I guess. Yep, yeah. yeah, you know, um, um, my, you know, back in the day when we come home, we watch Checkers and Pogo. We look forward to Checkers and Pogo or Captain yeah. Honolulu. Well, as a grown adult, I now look forward for Governor Ike's uh, press conference. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, I, 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 I actually watched that thing today. I actually watched it today. It was quite painful. But yeah. We'll be talking about some of that today. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I just went into our waiting room. We have actually Senator De La Cruz uh, is not in the waiting room, but we we have Senator Donna Mercado Kim, which yeah. is a surprise, and we have Senator Kurt Favela, which is another <laughs> surprise. Right so. On. I'm assuming Donovan is going to be on shortly, so we'll have the three amigos one more time. Gosh, it's going to be a fun night. It's going to be a fun night. Hey, people, right now, hit the share button. Hit the share button because it's going to be a blast off tonight. Uh, we didn't expect the other two, but Senator uh, De La Cruz did say that he was uh, he was going to ask them. I didn't think they were going to come on. So this is going to be cool. Senator yep. Mercado Kim and Senator Favela, we'll bring them in in a little bit. So right now, hit the share button. Hit the share button. Start a watch party because I have a feeling... Tonight is going to be exciting, okay? And then, of course, the shirts, everybody, the shirts. Um, tonight, I think tonight is going to be the last night for this shirt. So go ahead and place your orders. Ten bucks. This shirt is going to go away. Um, and a new one is going to surface probably on Friday or so. But uh, today will be the last day for this one. So ten bucks. The next shirt will be 15. So remember, all proceeds will go to... Hawaii Community Foundation, and in fact, on Saturday night we'll have Darcy Yukimura, uh, she's yep. the um, the Kauai the boss for uh, Hawaii Community Foundation. She's going to be on to explain all the good things that they're doing. But all of the monies we raise for these shirts, this one and the next one, uh, we will go to we'll go to the Hawaii Community Foundation. So, all right, let me bring in and Donna's camera isn't working, so please forgive her. Uh, her camera will not be working here. There's DM Kim, and there's Kurt Favela, and Kurt is connecting to audio. I hope Senator Kim connected to audio. Yes. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Senator, I can yeah. hear you loud and clear. Can you see us? Can you see us? I can see you, folks. Okay. I just don't want you to see me. <laughs> you don't want to be seen. I I had to lie, and I told him your camera was broken. Okay, it's broken. <laughs> one look at one look at me, and you're gonna know why the camera is broken. But you know, you know the no, good no, no. thing is, like, remember 58th State Wrestling? <laughs> If Francis would be interviewing uh, Johnny Baran, and only had a voice coming out of the box, we 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 just in the same mode right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Senator Senator Favela, you look pissed off. Um, Oh, oh, there we go. There we I go. Know, you look, I know, I know. Oh, now you. I, 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 to see me too. I was too busy listening to you guys' conversation, so 
I, I didn't know you guys could see me or hear me, so I was just waiting. <laughs> no, no, we, we could. I was getting we scared. My turn. You guys were talking about, you know, old Hawaii wrestling, so I was getting interested in there. <laughs> yeah, well, and I was you getting know, scared. Some like, and all that, huh? We have to cut this guy off. I know I scared put him on the air tonight, but now you look good. You're smiling. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> I like the shirt. I like the hat. I like it's beautiful, man. Beautiful. It's so, very colorful. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, that's 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 uh, ever beach for you. We colorful yeah, people. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, I don't know where Senator uh, De La Cruz is, but I'm sure he'll be jumping on. Uh, you know, we've been we've been covering pretty much the uh, what the, the goings on, and I I have been speaking to Senator De La Cruz and Senator Kochi uh, on the telephone. Um, you know, the big issue we had discussed the last time we were all on uh, was the airport screening process. I know you guys went down and took a look uh, for yourselves. So a couple of things we want to talk about tonight, if it's okay with you folks. Again, none of this stuff is scripted. So, you know, for the for the people watching, th this is totally impromptu. No, nobody knows what the other is going to say. But we wanted to, if possible, cover the airport screening process and, and how that is coming around. I understand you guys will have another meeting tomorrow. But up until this point, if you can give us an update. And then as well as the phase one opening of the state. A uh, lot of confusion that, that has been going on in the last 24 hours. So if we can just touch on that a little bit. So with that, um, I don't know who wants to start. It's kind of awkward looking at DM Kim on the screen. But uh, no, no, we can have our senator uh, Donna if she wants to uh, start. Can we can we just start off with with uh, with your visit to the airport and what you guys saw and what you know what's going on? Where is this thing heading? Uh, are we comfortable or confident that we'll be in essence be able to screen visitors properly as as time goes on? Well, on the on one hand, uh, I think the committee was happy to see some of the things that they were in fact uh, screening and doing and how they had the visitors, you know, going from one station to the other station. And here I am using my hands thinking I'm on camera, of course I'm not. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, there were certain areas in which we thought they were lacking. And certainly one was on the addresses on whether or not it was a B Airbnb a vacation rental, illegal or, or legal one, which according to the proclamations, uh, none of them are legal in, during this time for the 14 day quarantine. And so we had asked that they would check with the counties and get the list because the counties do have a list of the legal vacation rentals and HTA has a list of all the illegal ones. And so I believe they have in fact started doing that. Uh, the other thing that we found is that people were uh, making a one day reservations. One of the ways to get around this is that they make a one day reservation. And of course, after the one day, they meet the requirements, they're allowed to leave the airport, but then they leave the hotel and then you don't know where they went and you can't keep track of them. And if they said they're heading back to the mainland, you know, that's not true. They could be headed to the neighbor islands. They could be headed anywhere. The other area is they were signing the doc declaration about the 14 day quarantine, about the penalties, et cetera, et cetera, but they weren't reading it. I stood there and they, you know how you just click off the boxes or you just initial and you don't read. And so we asked them to verbally um, um, say it to them and make sure they will verbally repeat back that they understood um, before they would be allowed to leave. Uh, Finally, the announcements over the PA, which I thought was a common sense kind of thing, was about social distancing, but nowhere while we were there did they talk about the 14-day quarantine. And so that's another thing that we requested them to do. And, and of course, they said, yes, they can do it. They'll, they'll do it right away. But it makes you wonder why there to tell them that, why somebody within the whole airports or DOT uh, you know, they're not looking at how they can improve the processes to keep our state safe. Um, so, you know, while there were some good things going on, I think there are many areas in which we need to improve because based on what we saw, and I'm sure Senator Favela will, will agree with this, is that they cannot duplicate this for when we get more visitors come in. I mean, they're doing it now for approximately 500 visitors 
a day. Imagine when we go to a thousand visitors, um, we're not going to be able, it took too much man talk. Yeah, so the, the, the problem that we have um, going forward with this um, screening, I mean, everything was good. I mean, in a sense that, you know, at least there, there had something up that we got to, to see. But the frustrating part was, and, and, and that we had was that, like Senator uh, Donna said, um, we, we, uh, we're not gonna be able to do with the mask. Um, we was doing gates that had like 34 passengers, 40 passengers. Um, and it was already a difficult task in getting them through the process. Going forward, I understand that the governor and all these kind of miscommunications that we're gonna open up. But I'll tell you right now, our airport is not ready. We're not ready, and I'll tell you right now, the state of Hawaii and the residents of Hawaii is not ready for a second wave of this virus coming to our island. So right now, um, you know, it's okay that we're going to, um, you know, open up certain other shops because they got to make business and whatnot. But to open them up full force for all the airlines to be coming in, I think that would be a big mistake. I think that would be a big mistake on our part if we do that because we're not ready right now at the airport in doing the masses that we was told at least minimum, minimum, one person from whatever state they come in, a homeless person, houseless person, or whatever you want to call them, will try to make their way in here. And what Senator Donald was saying earlier, the process is they know they know the routine. They'll make a reservation and how's this one? Not only just make the reservation and um, and, and come in, but the part we got upset about is that we asked them. They just look at the, the reservation paper. So I can print out a paper before I come to Honolulu that I show my reservation form, that I have a reservation. Not all of them was calling it. They say, oh, they get proof of reservation, we let them go. That, that's a big mistake because like how Senator Donna said, they'll make it for one day and then they'll leave. They, they, they don't really even call, call the hotel they get the cell number to make sure the cell number is working, but they don't really actually call the hotel. That's what the point that we was asking. Yeah, they have a reservation, they check the guy's reservation, so forth and so on. And they dig this one. The guys who come in that don't have a destination, they allow them to call a hotel, any hotel, to make a reservation. And if they cannot, then they get detained and voluntarily, whatever they want to say go back to wherever they came from. But that one individual that was sitting there, he had no, no return flight. He had no place to stay. And then we sent him back to where he came from. But then again, that's what I'm talking about, resources and funding. Because if I'm not mistaken, our taxpayers are paying for that trip to go back to the mainland. So we should be stopping it from wherever they're leaving from before they come here, because it only costing our resources to uh, do the way. So that, that's just my take on that. Well, can I- pretty can... Frust frustrating because when we were listening to the Senate committee meeting a couple of weeks ago, that's one of the things that they had assured us, everybody, that they were going to be doing. And I wanna welcome Senator De La Cruz. Thank you, Senator, for joining us. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, no problem. We're just having some fun. As you can see, Donna, Donna's camera is broken, so. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's probably rice. Um, it's probably rice stuck right on top of that. You know where the camera lens there? Probably on a piece of rice yeah. on top there. I don't yeah. know. No, it's it's gum. <laughs> the gum on top. <laughs> <laughs> hey Mel, I want I wanted to ask um the senators, you know, so having this knowledge that you know we're not prepared. Uh I made this comment with uh, uh Senator Wakai the, the other night. That is I believe that, yes, we're, we're at a zero level. So basically, we've contained the virus and we've kept it, you know, we've kept it at a, a at a, you know, like a, like a zero level, maybe one or two, very small. But now we stand a chance of having an onslaught coming from the outside in. So say, for instance, the percentages are maybe one for every thousand that gets by. But all it has to take is just that one to be the infected one. That's the part that we don't know. That's the unknown variable. That should that one start making contact, 
are we prepared from what you folks saw that day? If it gets by the airport level, are we prepared in the contact tracing department? Because it seemed like when when Major General Hara came on came on the air, he wasn't getting cooperation, so he had to ask the governor to order the DOH to get more contact tracing in place. So those kind of messages that the the, the regular folks like us get, it makes it, it makes me wonder, you know, how is our safety? Okay, so the committee is the committee is definitely concerned about that. I mean, Senator Kim and and Senator Favela have asked Department of Health several times, how many people do you need, and come up with a budget. They told us they need about three times as many staff to do the contact tracing. So they probably have enough people at the current levels, like you're talking about, one per day. But as you start to get more and more people infected, you're going to need a lot more people to do contact tracing. I think part of the problem is that Department of Health is saying that the people that they would have to hire would need special skills. And that's something that the committee said, well, it's really investigative and phone calls and tracking. You know, those are the kind of skills that, that might, will be needed when they do contact tracing. We've asked them for that so that they can ramp up their, their, their divisions appropriately. Um, they can't wait any longer because even if we haven't officially reopened tourism, they're coming, you know, and it's increasing. And I'm not sure what the administration is actually waiting for, for them to, to physically say that, they're, that they've reopened it, despite the fact that it's already on the rise. But that's, that's, a, that's a, a definite point of concern on making sure that we have enough staff for, for contact tracing. Um, and the other thing is, once we have, if we do have an increase, what are going to be the protocols? Are we all going back to stay at home? Is a 14-day quarantine going to go back in place? It's, there's, there's just a lot of things that we have to make sure are at least on the governor's radar. And if they could announce some timing of these things, because, you know, I think Senator Kim said it once that it's almost like whiplash, you know? Oh, we're going we're gonna to open the florist. And then, oh, whiplash. No, we're not going to open the florist. Okay, we're going to open the florist. Now it's, no, we're going to open businesses. Oh, no, no, we're not going to open shop. So it's constant. It's very confusing and it can be very um, frustrating versus what the committee's been trying to do from the onslaught is to say, what are the different levels of threat? Can we color code them? What are the protocols? What kind of staffing are needed? So if we say we're at level three, at the red threat level now, and if the governor says, okay, but in two weeks, we're hoping to go down to the next threat level, which is orange, this is what it means for businesses, this is what it means for gatherings, this is what it means for people, this is what it means for staffing. And we can get some idea, the community can plan, you at least have some confidence that government has a plan and that we can implement it. But that's unfortunately not happening. So the committee is going to continue to try to get that moving. Okay, thank you. I, I got real, real quick. I want to just before I forget, Kevin asked about somebody stopping over on Oahu, come in, um, asking if they got to spend 14 days on Oahu. No, they don't. They, they'll, they'll quarantine on Oahu, <clears throat> and, and if it's an overnighter, they're gonna go to their hotel, and then when they get onto their flight to Kauai, then they'll do the 14-day quarantine here on Kauai. So, yeah. So I'm not good. sure because I came in late. I'm not sure if the other members already talked about the fact that in the emergency proclamation, the governor actually uh, finally agreed to not rent any uh, car rentals to those who have to adhere to the 14 day quarantine. So that's that's a huge one for us. That's something that um, we hope will help. Well, I mean, you know, we've been yelling and screaming about that for quite a while. I was so happy to see it. You know, he didn't mention it at his briefing. I know, he didn't. It, you know, it, it, it kind of drove me nuts because it was only after I read that thing five yeah. times. In fact, yeah. somebody brought it to my attention. Yeah, yeah me and Charlie, I, I'm not and sure if he didn't reading. mention it because I'm not sure if he didn't mention it because the committee's been pushing it. Well, I, I don't know what I honestly don't think he wants the, the, the visitors to I don't know. I don't know why it just seems like they're moving really fast, they meaning the administration into into opening tourism. I got a call today from a friend who's a GM that was on the phone with uh, with his uh, owners group on the mainland today, and and uh, and he was told that the owners group told them in the, in this conference call with all the GMs from all the properties that the industry is putting a lot of pressure on the governor to open up the quarantine because they have this 
uh, safest spot on earth, Hawaii, a marketing campaign, ready to go. And that's what I'm afraid of. And I think the governor, he was asked today, point blank, what's the time frame for lifting the quarantine? And he goes, well, it'll be in place at least till the 31st of May. But he didn't, it, it seems like he's going to start lifting this thing. And that's my, my huge fear. And, well, and I'm know, very excited about the rental car thing. That's going to be a little logistical issue to, to get going. But, you know, one of the GMs on Kauai, um, we found out about this yesterday, Donovan, you may know about this, but uh, is from the Marriott. They, he doesn't issue keys, room keys. So they get escorted to the room. And if they leave the room, they cannot get back in. They got to come to front desk. They get, and then they turn them into the cops. So that's another idea that, you, you know, the governor could prohibit any hotel at check-in to issue any keys. That's one of the things that we have um, yes. talked with the AG yes. about and with the yes. tourism authority. And on Thursday, um, you're going to hear about that, uh, where they can restrict the entry and exits from these rooms. If they do leave, they have to go to the front desk and then they can turn them into the authorities because if it wasn't for medical reasons then they violated the quarantine. But you know yep. what's very frustrating for me, Mel, is that um, you know when we, when we started this, the governor was slow in instituting a number of these um, measures to keep us safe. And this whole thing with the car rental is a good example how these things are trickling in now when we're starting to open and yet he's opening without being cautious. So on one hand, he, he took too long. And on the other hand, instead of giving people time to get ready for this, it's like, boom. And it was confusing. And even today, I watched his um, press conference and they were saying, and he goes, oh, I don't know why it's in conflict. I don't know what, why it's confusing. Um, <laughs> So it, it, I, I don't understand. None of the mayors wanted to call him on it. So um, I, I don't understand. It's, it's very frustrating, very confusing for, for, for us. The scary, part, the scary part about this whole thing and our residents and the uncertainty that they have is that we not even really pass any of this. We still get family members is in intensive care in the hospital. But Kapuna is really afraid. There's a lot of people that are still very, very terrified of this disease. And we are talking about um, trying to limit people coming in on, on you know, non-essential flights coming in. And, and we understand that this, that's not going to happen. The governor not going to ask the, the, um, the president. And they say, well, you know, be careful what we ask for and all these kinds of stuff. But the bottom line, unless we can get on control on, on, on this pandemic, we, we, Hawaii, and you guys know, all of us know, our small businesses, our families, we cannot take a hit, another wave like this, because this means that family members and more family members will die. And I, I'm not willing to open that up and gamble with somebody else's life and family lives just to bring in and making people feel comfortable in flying to Hawaii and, and making and having a vacation. Because right now, even, even Chris Tatum said, this is not the time to come and enjoy Hawaii. It's time to stay home and, and wait until this thing, um, you know, we can really get a hold of it because right now, even the people that are flying on the airlines, they're scared. The guys who are working at the ho uh, hotels, they're scared. I mean, when is it gonna come to a point that we're gonna lose our first responders and a lot of people will be getting sick and then we'll be stuck, we'll be stuck. So I, I think we need to be, you know, even, even Senator Donovan and, and Senator Donovan, we was there. We was having 40 guys on a flight coming in. Whole day, maybe 100 to 200. Now, just the other day, I heard combined over 800. So it's not going down. They're not afraid of the quarantine. They're not afraid of whatever proclamation the governor makes. It's, 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 they're still coming. And they're coming in droves. So I, I really pray that we can come to a conclusion that we can really protect our people of Hawaii because they're really afraid. I mean, it's hard to even go to the store and shop for the essentials that you need for the house. And you see the cupolas there, desperate. Um, and, and when they see you, of course, they know that if you work at the Capitol, they're asking you questions. And, you know, when you look into the eyes and you see the uncertainty, what can I tell them? You know, because the governor's not listening to us, even as a committee. And then when we tell Linda, Linda blocks it. So we we frustrated enough that we tried to get these messages out 
and there's mixed feelings when he goes on the on the TV and the Senator Donovan said, oh, the florist is open. The florist is not open. The malls is open. The mall is not open. I mean, we need somebody that's going to stay there. And like I said before, we cannot be seaweed in the water. We got to be stern. Got to be stern. He got to make the message clear if that's what he's going to do. But then he make the message and then the mayors come out and they not really feel comfortable with it. Why didn't he con you know, consult the mayors? before he made this announcement. I would have done that, that's protocol. Ask them if they feel comfortable about it. Don't make it and then everybody- He said he meets with them ask. three times a week. He said he meets oh with them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, yesterday, yesterday at his press conference, he, he specific, one of the questions was, are all the mayors in agreement? And he said that they have been in communication and they have reached a consensus between all the mayors. That's what he said yesterday, I, I listened to it. And that simply was not true. Um, and we obviously found that out last night when, when the mayor is all of a sudden, wait, I, that's the, but the same thing we'll ask, That's the same thing when asked Linda. Does the governor know that you've been blocking this committee for over four or five times? Oh, yeah. He's aware. I mean, there's not an answer. We asked her, do the governor give you the authority to undermine the Senate? Like we told her, she is not an elected official. So we wanted to know if the governor knows. And he said, yeah, she said he knows. I mean, let, let me ask the, let, let, let me ask the uh, committee um, and any one of you senators can answer this. Has the heads of the hospitals been called in before the committee and given an opportunity to, to weigh in should something starts taking off? Because, you know, I, I know what they said, but yet on Kauai, I know what the numbers are, how many beds we have, because uh, maybe two blocks from where I live is KVMH, and I know that's a small facility, but it handles the entire west side of Kauai. So if anything happens, if they get overrun, everything needs to be shifted over to uh, Wilcox. But like on the other islands, Big Island, Maui, Maui, they already have a problem in and of itself with Maui Memorial. Mm -hmm. So if, if you want to consider taking that out of the mix right now and do that is under control. Any, has, has any of the hospital people been asked to come in and, and, and address the committee? Or uh, you folks want to stay away from that? I mean, I don't know, just as a suggestion, because I think, you know, they're ultimately going to be the, the frontline warriors, right? When when the when the kaka hits the fan, they, they're going to have to be the one um, trying to stabilize everything for everybody's safety. Yeah, so tomorrow's probably going to be our last meeting until we recess again from session. So when we come back, that's something that we can look at. It's just that the committee's focus has been a lot on unemployment and a lot on uh, the, the, the quarantine with the airports and a lot on redeployment of staff. Mm -hmm. You know, in addition to that, in general, what's the plan? You know, we're working with Haima and trying to talk to, to Linda. And those seem, we were, we've been trying to respond to the real immediate things just because we know people are hurting. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to future planning, those are probably things that we probably are gonna have to take up because we, we don't know what information is being filtered from the hospitals, right? I mean, like you said, that's, it's not clear if we have the, what's our capacity when we, have a, when we do have an increase again, are we, are we able to, to withstand that? And if not, what is it gonna take so that we can stabilize that? And that's something that Sarah Park talked about. You don't wanna open up the economy until you make sure your healthcare system is, is more than adequate to be able to, uh, to handle a kind of surge. So that's something that we probably should look at when we come back, or when we come back into recess. Do you have, how long is the recess? So, the, we're going to go into session. We're going to take up five or six bills, mainly the budget bill, the oh. CARES Act, um, allowing the governor to loan to, to borrow from the federal government, uh, shoring up the rainy day fund. Uh, there's also going to be a bill for for the for the legislature, the governor and his cabinet, and the judiciary to defer all raises for at least a year. Um, so that may take. A week and a half to two weeks and then we'll, we're going to go into recess again then in june when it's hopefully safer 
uh, that then that we can reconvene and take on other bills and other measures. At that time, though, we really believe that we have to codify some of these things that we're talking about. You know, one of the things that came up in one of the hearings was what's going to be the guideline for restaurants, right? I mean, how many people in there? What, what do people have to wear? Uh, how many people can wait outside? We're not quite sure. We asked Department of Health, what, is, what are going to be those rules? And we don't want to see guidelines because guidelines may mean that it's optional. We want to make sure that it's going to be something that's going to be consistent and that can be enforceable. Uh, if they don't come up with these things in a timely manner, then we're probably going to have to take those things up in June. Um, so, Donald, what time is your, your hearing tomorrow? Uh, people are asking that they want to watch it tomorrow. What time is that? 12.30. Oh, 12.30? Yeah. Okay, I will be sharing that on my page as well. Uh, we meet with the you. airport and the tourism people at um, 1.30. Okay. Uh, right. you know, uh, I, someone had asked... I Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No. no, I had a follow up on the when you're talking about the, the health side. Do any of you know why the governor and the Department of Health has been so um, they're not comfortable with widespread testing? Why are they not so um, aggressive with the widespread testing as everyone else in this country is? Uh, it, it just doesn't seem like Dr. Anderson is, is using or, or thinks that the widespread testing is of use. Any of you have any idea why? Well, they told us that the, fo the focus is going to be uh, surveillance and investigations or contact tracing and investigations, uh, sentinel surveillance and, and other types of surveillance mechanisms, testing of only those who are symptomatic, and testing of those who were in contact with someone positive. Those, are, those generally are gonna be their four buckets. And they have, they have some, uh, and some other ideas that they're, they're throwing around. They haven't necessarily formalized the plan. What they did tell us is that they believe Hawaii is one of the few states that is, is still doing contact tracing because our numbers are low. A lot of other states, because the numbers are so high, they just gave up on contact tracing, which uh, is why they pro probably ended up yeah. doing testing. And I really don't know if I believe Bruce Anderson when he says that. I mean, no one, no one. And, and I've followed up. I mean, I've done pretty good research on all, not all, but on a lot of the states <laughs> and, and, and jurisdictions that there's not another planet or not another person on this planet that is saying the same thing that he is. In fact, they say the complete opposite. It's testing, testing, testing. Yeah. Not just the yeah. people that you think are, 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 are coming in with symptoms. But widespread testing, you know, his sentinel testing is basically doing random testing throughout yeah. the community. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the committee has the committee has been saying this from day one, and yeah. you know, the Department of Health should be the leader, should be the yeah. people giving guidance on this, on everything, and they've been hesitant. They didn't, you know, we talked about masks. They didn't want to do masks. They don't want to do yeah. tests. They didn't want to do the 14 day quarantine. You know, they didn't want to take temperatures at the airport. They didn't want to do anything. It's, uh, it's absurd. I, I don't know yeah, where and, the leadership and, and is, that, that but, now, the but I... now they want us to hire all these people so they can do contract testing because they just want to build up their, their department, I guess. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. No, because listen, that has, he has been consistent with that from day one. In fact, yeah. the Lieutenant governor, was in conflict with them, you know, in fact, got himself kind of like booted off of the, off of the task force, but a while back, but he has never deviated from that. And he, he, he says he, he, and I, he said it himself. He said, testing does nothing for us. That's what he said. Yeah. Exact words. Testing does nothing for us. It's a snapshot yeah. in time, the but there is the not another soul, another expert, yeah. another health person in this country that shares that opinion. He's the only one. He's the only one. And, and they, want us to to increase, oh they want us to increase their department so they can do contract testing. That's what they want. You, you know the sad part about this whole thing? This whole thing about this, we have a Department of Health person that's not a doctor and making medical decisions without a medical background. That's the problem right now. Uh, we, we have somebody um, that was giving advice, doctors that are giving advice, different doctors around the state but even like us, that is not doctors that have a little bit of common sense, was trying to explain to him something. When he came to the meetings in the beginning, he wore no mask. 
but we all was wearing masks. We all had our mask on. He came to the meetings with no mask, no, no, no um, idea of the whole purpose of having this, uh, taking this thing seriously. And that's the frustrating part for me because every time I talk to this man, I try to listen to him. I try to take an education, educated guess on where is he actually coming from, you know? Because I don't know what planet um, he comes from, but this planet that we're on is reality. People is dying. This is serious. And he sits there and says, oh, we're not going to do this. Oh, we're going to do this this way. And then I want to hear him say that I got this advice from some doctors or some, some medical field. I talked to Queens, uh, Kaiser, all these doctors. And we came to a collaborative decision. This is what we're going to do. Not him. He, he's not a medical doctor. And I think in the future, if we do get appointed to the Department of Health, they got to have some kind of medical background. Because yeah. this is a pandemic, and we're seriously talking to somebody who has no medical guidance. Really, well, Dr. Really Park really. Has a, is a doctor, and we're not, you know, together. They're yeah. not. They're not doing what needs to be done. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're not. I'm, I'm sorry. So yeah. I, I think part of, part of what we're going to have to do is legislate the the policies that that we really believe are going to be in the better interest of the public public. That doesn't mean that they're, they're going to implement them correctly or with enthusiasm. But when we come back in June, I feel like that's that's where hopefully the committee can make recommendations to the Senate as to some of the policies that need to be adopted. Thank you, Charlie. Well, you know, getting back to this, uh, this travel, because that seems to be the hot button topic, right? Because if we didn't have to worry about travelers coming into the state, I think we could really operate and be comfortable that the virus is contained. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But one, uh, one of the uh, viewers asked that, what if a person makes a reservation with a hotel and has that paper? They come through, they show everybody at the screening checkpoint the paper. And like Senator Favela said, and uh, Senator Kim earlier, before he came on uh, Donovan, that uh, some some of the, the screeners weren't calling the hotel, hotel to verify. And then once the person leaves that area, they cancel the reservation. And then yep. we don't know where they're at after that point because that, that paper is like their golden ticket to get past that, that last stronghold of protection, right? Yeah. So once they're past that, we, we are caca creek, creek after that. And again, erring on the side of caution, all it takes is one and just say, what if that one person that came in from maybe a, a transfer from LAX to Hawaii via New York becomes that infected person? What do we do? I mean, I don't think we have the resources to go hunt them unless we put an all points bulletin out. And that's going to be it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough cookie to crack at that point. So somebody was asking about that. Yeah. Well, and you the, can make a reservation and you can get a confirmation and then you can cancel it, but it's not going to show on that confirmation paper, right? Yeah. You can right. still have the old confirmation and nobody know that it was canceled. Yeah. Right, right. That, that, they said once okay. they leave the airport, once they leave the airport, um, it's pretty much out of their hands because there's no way of, of uh, tracing them. And that's the reason why we brought up about the rental cars because we've been seeing on Facebook and Twitter that they're having a beautiful vacation with their surfboards on the car and going driving around our islands on their rental car. And that's the reason why that was brought up at the last meeting. Yeah, but it's, it's important that the, um, that the airport staff call the, where they're going to be located, their place of quarantine, yeah. and they have to verify. So we've been pushing not just for the air, not just for hotels. We've been asking that, okay, if you go to a residence, we, can you at least call the residents and make sure that they're expecting that guest? I mean, we've been, we really have been trying to push as much as we can to not let them leave until all of that information is verified. And if for some reason they don't show up, then they need to report that to the authorities ASAP. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like Senator Kim has been saying, um, unfortunately, the committee is having to go through almost every, okay, if this, not that, if not, if this, not that. I mean, for to, you know, we physically had to show up at the airport to try to help them come up with a process. You know, so let me ask you then. So has, has Major General Hara or HDA 
actually told you the amount of training that each personnel assigned at the airports, the specifics of what they have to ask and yeah. what the goal is, what they're trying to attain. Because so from the, what you're saying is that those who don't ask certain questions, it doesn't seem like they went through the proper training because that would have been part of the standard protocol, right? Of questions to ask. Yeah, so the short answer is no. The short answer is no. And so the airport is having to develop that mainly at our request because they're already changing out the contractors that were doing it to airport staff. Okay. Yeah, so Senator, that's what one of the things that Senator Kim told him. You know, they, they, they have to, you know, when they're doing this thing, uh, what was the training? So they need a script. And that's yeah, what we've been exactly. saying in the committee, like exactly. Senator Donovan was saying at the committee hearing, they need a script and everybody got to have the same script and say the same thing over and over because when Senator Kim said when she was on the airplane as a stewardess uh, flying this airline, she had a script, she had a court. You know, so everything that you have when you're going to do anything, you got to have some kind of script to be uh, repetitious. And if you're not, then you're confusing everybody and the people there is not being well trained. And um, that's a big flaw right there. Yeah, and they were also asking them to make sure that at every step when they take the temperature, when they actually sign the quarantine form, when they, when they provide their information for verification, that they have a verbal acknowledgement, similar to when you go to and sit on the exit row, right? When right. You, as soon as you board, they ask you, okay, are you aware that you're on exit row? You have to say yes. During, on the plane, they even ask you, are you guys aware? I want to see a verbal yes. Those are some of the things we're asking them to do, that at every point in time, when there's contact with, with airport staff, they have to verify, yes, I am aware of the quarantine. And... Um, Senator Keoho Kalole had even asked if they can sign the quarantine form first. That way, whatever information they provide, they would be, they, them, if they lie, that's perjury. And then we could, we could um, make sure we could enforce quickly because of the perjury. The other thing that said- what I wanted them to do as well is not arrest them and they got to go to court, is give them a ticket. Oh, you get a parking ticket or you get a seating ticket right there with the envelope yeah. and you can find and you have to put it in and pay for it. Let them contest it, you know, because yeah. they're, they're not getting fined right away. They got to go to a judge. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, th I think what makes it uh, even more difficult, and I'll let Mel chime in. Um, you know, the, the thing is, no matter what happens at the airport, once they pass that, once they pass that, uh, that, that barrier right there at the airport and there so so basically we have an island right and we're and, and it's, it's sterile now once that person comes in and gets past mm -hmm. and gets on that island we run the risk of the sterileness being gone that's i think that's the thing so you know the enforcement is either they comply at the airport or you turn them around but you cannot let them get past that point that, that it's too late already yeah and i think that's what a lot of us feel and so the question now remains is the safety of the community in, as a whole. If we have these pockets like Kauai had a, a private plane fly under the radar, land at Anapipe Salt Pond, right? If it wasn't for someone keeping an eye out, if it wasn't for the police and National Guard rapidly responding to go get those people, who knows what could have happened? And I know, you know, some of the people we look at it is, hey, you know, we get low, we get low counts because why? We're low because we did everything possible to stop the spread. That's why we're low. But now we're looking at a chance of letting the thing, some more boogeyman's come into our shores. And that's, I think that's the hard part that uh, as locals, we're, we're, we're trying to get our heads around and it, it's, it, it's very unnerving, I guess. See, see the problem is uh, we, everybody here in Hawaii, all the residents that live here work very hard to keep it low, yeah? And then we're going to be low, low for open them back up and bring people here to infect our people. I mean, you see what happened on the big island? I mean, it just yeah. took one, one uh, person and it infect a whole lot of people. Same on Maui. You know what I mean? I mean, we cannot handle another Captain Cook. You know, we cannot infect the whole, whole uh, nation of Hawaii uh, and, and get sick. I mean, it's not going to happen. If our first responders go down, we're, we're vulnerable. We're done. We're done. You know we don't have enough respirators. You know what else is happening is because the other states are opening up, they're seeing an uptick 
in cases. And if they're opening up yes. people to travel, they're going to come here with an uptick and they're going to bring it to us. So it, that's even greater um, risk that we're putting the people. Yes, exactly. Today, 20% increase in cases on the mainland, 20% jump in wow. one day. And, that, and that's, that's, that's fact. You know, I was joking with Charlie. I wasn't joking. I, I mean, I said it in jazz. I'm not kidding. I mean, I wish the state would, would I'd do it for free. Charlie and I could get that checklist done in three to four hours. I'm serious. You know, you walk to TSA with a bottle of water to kick your ass back. Yeah. Yeah. You, you put your laptop in your backpack, you go through and you're not on yeah. that special line, you get your ass kicked back. Yeah. They cannot tell me they don't know how to do this stuff. It's not difficult. It's a one page checklist. Yeah. You take the guy's airplane ticket, where his return ticket, his itinerary, you check his hotel reservation, they don't match. You go to the law enforcement line now. You got to prove accommodations for the length of your stay. How, how hard is it? And if not, you get your butt back on that plane and go home. Th that is what I think. And I, this is not my anger, it's not to you folks. I, I tell you, I watch you guys. I, for the people watching, you guys got to appreciate this three right here because they work their asses off. And they're but you trying know what? That's best. what's so frustrating, Mel, because it's common sense. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's mean, to be an how, hard, how hard is it? How hard is this? They don't, they're not thinking. I don't know what it is. Plane ticket, uh, hotel reservation. That's the only two documents. They make a big thing at, at your meeting, at your hearing, when the guy said, oh, because one of you, I think it was Kurt, one of you said, what were you guys doing? Or maybe it was, no, I think it was Senator Kim. What were you guys doing? How did the guys get through? And you guys had passed, passed these guys and they're all running around Waikiki getting arrested. And the response was, well, uh, to be honest, we were only checking to see the ID match. <laughs> but that's what you know they did before they got on a goddamn plane. You don't need to check that when they, you, you, you know you what know I'm trying to say? You know what's we want to make sure that these people get to where they need to go to their quarantine hotel, wherever the hell it is. But we cannot be letting these guys sneak sneak to the cracks. And again, what I'm suggesting is a checklist that's one page long that you check, check, check. Oh, no, no can check that box. You go to the law enforcement line. That's that's all I'm suggesting. What's what's worse is in our meeting when we ask the airport, why aren't you doing this? Or they go, Oh, we're waiting for we're waiting for General Hara to tell us. And yeah, then, yeah, we take my we take our orders from the general. Like, oh, oh my god. My god. All, all three of you had scream. All three of you. All six of us. All six, six of yeah. well. <laughs> you. You know, the thing is, uh, Colonel Sanders was also a colonel, um, and it wasn't too good for Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> but I, I, I just want to let you guys know, Senator D uh, D D Donovan De La Cruz, that's the reason why he gets frustrated with these guys. And he, you know, we're all sitting there, and we're all listening to the same thing, like you said, common sense, right? Common sense. And he chimes in on about the leadership that he's going to prove you know, produce, but then he still got to check with Linda, I mean, the governor. But the bottom line is this. He tells he's the leader, but Donovan, you know, Senator Donovan De La Cruz said, when you gone, what's going to happen? They don't have a plan. They're always going to the general. Yeah. You know what I mean? These not car insurance guys. You know what I mean? Come on, you got to stop going to the general. <laughs> but the bottom line is they have to have a plan. And you guys, right, it is common sense. That's the reason why our senators sit there and it just blows our mind. And Donovan, you know, Senator Donovan De La Cruz said, you know, we're going around reading around the roses. We're going around circles after circles. So what you guys want us to do? Are we going to session? You guys want us to make laws? How are we going to make laws when you guys don't give us nothing? That's what Senator Donovan De La Cruz said. Not once, more than once. And they just sit there. Still didn't bring nothing to us that we're going to be going into session to have something to bite on. Zero. <laughs> Waiting for the jam. Right. This is not car insurance, eh? <laughs> yeah. We, let me, can we take a real short? I just like um, get a couple of questions that have been coming up by a few people. Um, Senator, I guess, De La Cruz, can you explain the recess process? I think a lot of people are they're curious what the hell is a recess and why are you guys going to recess during a pandemic? Uh, what, what is that? Yeah, so what a recess is that really you could still have committee meetings like we're having, even though because uh, the CDC said no gatherings of more than 10. They essentially stopped all committee meetings, except really for hours and then the, the, house, the house recovery committee that's on Zoom. But what a recess is, no session on the floor. Okay. So the but 25 members and the house, the 51 members in the house have no, no meetings on the floor. 
Right, but you guys are still working. A recess is just a term because your, your session cannot be called because of the social distancing. Yeah, but the committees, the individuals, they're still working. I mean, we're okay. getting more emails. I mean, our staff is following up. We have staff volunteering at unemployment. I mean, you know, our staff now, hopefully we're very responsive to the public in getting all of our reports up, and our, our memos up, the correspondence up. I mean, our website is full of information from the committee. Yeah, normally under recess, we would still be at the Capitol working and just not having a, um, a meeting on the floor. However, because the Capitol is shut down and we cannot meet and we're social, then we don't have any committee meetings going on. But we're in recess because we don't want to adjourn because once you adjourn, you cannot come back until yeah. you have a whole lot of stuff go on. So we put ourselves in recess so we can come back in a short period of time. We can call ourselves back, which is well, okay. thank you. Thank you for the clarification. I think a lot of people were taking like you guys are taking a, a vacation and heading out. Yeah, and, no, and no it's vacation. not like it's not like. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what makes what makes it kind of tough. I think too is when rules are placed upon the, the community and we follow those yeah. rules to flatten the curve. So we got this ruling by the CDC that says no more mm -hmm. ten people at a gathering. But if you practice social distancing, as big as the rotunda is at the Capitol, you can actually have a session and everybody be six feet apart. See, so that, that's the kind of stuff that people like me, we, we cannot understand because if you're telling me I can be out in the open as long as I'm six feet apart, I can get 200 guys that go down for two miles. We're not violating the social distancing rule. But the CDC makes a makes a rule that no more than ten people. But yet, if you have enough space that everybody has maybe hundred square feet per person, which is a ten by ten, then theoretically you can stay there without coming in contact with each other. Is that something? Yeah, that's so, well, the Senate is a lot easier to do that than the House, just because we have half <laughs> as many people. But a lot of it is also when you have testimony. So if you have like 50 people who are wanting to testify on a bill, then that's when it makes it difficult. Okay. Plus you have to think about staff and all the people that have to come in to make all these things happen. So it's also our staffs, yeah? And yeah. Yeah, no, no, good, we, good, 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 good to have a people don't. because that's, that's how basically um, I would look at it, but yet, you know, I, I forgot mm -hmm. about your staffing and all that. So it, it's a good, it's a good way to get the message out to the people so they can understand because some people have been asking the question about the distancing rule. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause especially on controversial to... bills. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, for our committee, a committee hearing, our yeah. WAM staff, uh, Senator Donovan De La Cruz staff and all those guys that he's working, they're coming in, they put, they put in thousands of hours of work to make us be prepared for each meeting and every memo and everything that we do without this staffing, this, this committee hearing and this uh, special committee hearing would not be possible. So yeah, we held there and we were in front of the cameras and we're talking, but without the preparation and the in-depth preparation that they do, we cannot do our job neither. They, they make it easier for us to come out there and be prepared to, to come to these meetings. All of our staff do the same for preparing our folders for each meeting. But like I said, the WAM guys, these guys, I mean, it's unbelievable um, what they do to have this thing go on. It's not just simply just doing memos and getting the weird. They have to get Olelo. They got to make sure everything, the audio, everything working. So there's a lot of uh, mechanics in there. Even when we go down on a floor session, um, the preparation that it takes for each senator in each uh, session that goes through the, the, the preparation of having these meetings um, uh, at the Capitol. And that's what I learned. It's not a simple just show up to a meeting. This is not like a neighborhood board meeting. You know, this is different. But I, I, my hat's off to all of those guys that making us uh, and our, our situation easier, um, well, not easier, but um, more comfortable when we have these community hearings. But I, you know, I thank them. If it wasn't for them, we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. But they're also okay. trying to, to enforce protocol. So when a testifier or someone, one of the different departments come and testifies, when they leave, we take a recess and the staff sterilizes the whole area. They got they Clorox the tables, the chairs, the mics, so that they can allow the next person to come in. I mean, now there's extra things that we have to do to make sure that we can comply with the CDC rules. Okay, good, good. 
Yeah, yeah I, I think a lot of people, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> when I look at the, the uh, press conferences, both the county, the Caldwell and, and the governor, they use the same mic, they touch the same podium, none of them wearing gloves, they have a mic, they have a mask when they go talk so the germs can go on the microphone for the next guy or the next girl. Uh, you know, it's kind of shocking that it's, we're six weeks into this thing already. We've been preaching the, these, these uh, safety measures. Uh, it's kind of frustrating to, to see, like, you know, do they really, maybe they just don't think it's that serious. Um, I don't know. And I know some people don't. I know there's a, there's a few people that, that I know personally that don't think it's that bad and that, hey, you know, we all, we all should be going out and getting this thing so we can build the immunity. I know some people actually believe that. But, you know, I always go back to Charlie, you know, he lost a brother and we lose people every day. Uh, well, I don't know what the number was. I didn't check the, the, the country stats today, but thousands and thousands and thousands of people dying every day. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's so, so contagious that. that hey, Mel, um, Mel, let, let me ask, let's, let me ask them this. What about one alert system? Should, uh, <laughs> should the people... Should, should this thing run from us? I mean, it, it, it almost appears that because we're not getting cooperation on the widespread testing, it's almost like suppression of data can be dangerous for all of us, correct? Yes, so exactly. should, just should something happen, is there a guaranteed alert mechanism that the DOH has informed your committee that should we start ramping up with numbers, we're going to put the word out already, or they don't want, they're gonna to try to handle it first before saying anything. What what, that, what, what are they planning to do? Well, the Sean, committee tried, that, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Donna. That. What's that? We've been asking for that. Donovan's been asking yes. about an alert system from day one. Yeah, so if, if they go on, if they go to our website, they'll see like, we asked that maybe about six weeks ago for them to, to incorporate, similar to when you have a flood or when you have a hurricane, you get your text, you know, everyone's alerted. Other states and other countries are actually doing that. So if we say X amount of people got, were tested today and X amount of people were positive yeah. and the amount of deaths, every day they at least have a text, it just creates awareness and, and hopefully it changes people's behavior. And it's, a, it's more of a seriousness, right? I mean, you guys all yeah. know, we don't, we don't want a false alert like the missile thing, but you see how serious everybody took that, that missile alert um, um, when it came in, even though it was false? Everybody took, me, took it deadly serious. Well, this is the same thing with the virus, and that's why I get frustrated when I hear Senator De La Cruz and Senator Kim asking these things over and over like a broken record, CD or D DJ music or whatever you like call them, over and over, and it's not received. It's just like they mute, they mute us when it comes to those kinds of things. But yeah, Senator uh, Donovan De La Cruz has been asking this from, from a while back already because that would be the best thing to let our people know on a daily basis or maybe a weekly basis or something. Have something in play that we can let people know on the island or islands, all on the neighbor islands, what's happening in our state. and. I, I don't know the difficulties in that because I don't run a missile alert system, but we just want something that the community can see. Oh, okay, you know we're doing a little bit better. Oh, the thing went up. Or you know, can be more, be more, be more uh, um, aware, awareness. Yeah, because always, always knowledge is power. Yeah, knowledge is power. And if we're going to empower our people to stay safe and not and not get sick and die, um, then we need that. The problem with with, with our with our, uh, our leadership. I don't know because I, I don't know their family, but I have family members that I'm in school with that have their families is in intensive care. I mean, not, now he's doing a little bit better, but that's not the point. The point he was six weeks, six weeks plus in the hospital, the family not knowing if he was gonna leave this earth or, or what, but that's the seriousness that, that, that we have to take it. I mean, you know, these are people in, in, in my community in your community but I don't know if somebody in Washington police, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're getting the same dilemma, but it's a daily, daily task, daily stuff that we see on Facebook. Pray for my brother, pray for my uncle, pray for my dad. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if maybe he's not on Facebook, but I think he should get on Facebook so that he can see the reality 
of the state of Hawaii. They're in a pandemic. People are dying. They're scared. You know, and that's the seriousness that Senator De La Cruz said. We got to take this as an attack on Hawaii. We got to take it as an attack on Hawaii, just like any other defense mechanism. And, and he'd been repeatedly over and over asking for that mechanism. And it falls upon deaf ears. We was going to ask the general, but I mean, I don't know. He might, he got to have to check with Lindo on that. But the bottom line is we got to get things done. We have to. I mean, we could even see like if more people are on beaches, if they're not complying, if we see a trend, then you could send out a, a quick text saying, hey, this is going up. Don't forget the law is this. This is the executive order. Please stay stay at home. You know, just a constant uh, messaging of, of making sure that people are, are following and aware of what the rules are. That would be so helpful. So helpful. Hey, Costco, get one shipment of toilet paper right now. You know, something like that. <laughs> They're talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, get on a, I get on a question today. The lieutenant governor, I know we've talked about this quite a bit. I know I heard you guys been on this for a while. But they asked the lieutenant governor about the, the possibility of uh, uh, isolation hotel, quarantine hotel uh, uh, facility. He said they are. Uh, discussing that any did you guys get any and any information yes. from the attorney general yeah we yes we did and the answer is it's it's not going to happen so they're not going to have a defined secured location for for a quarantine site that's that's we've tried i mean without getting into how frustrating it is we, we've tried yeah, countless no, no. times to try to get them to that and so they're not going to do that, and they're also not going to send a letter to, to the president asking for non-essential travel. So what, what the committees decided to do, instead of constantly trying to get those things to occur, is what are, what are things that we can do in the meantime that might supplant those efforts? And so that's where going back to even working with the hotels and giving what, like Donna said, the, the one key for the for the day, once they get in, they don't have it. We're gonna have the rental car. We're gonna have to come up with other ways to do it if they if they're just not gonna move forward on those two initiatives. Well, let me kind of show an incident that happened. Someone said, just repeat the incident, and this happened at our Safeway. And all it was is the local guy asking this the tourist couple that came or the, the wife, and apparently the, they must have been here maybe a couple of days because her response initially was just firing away at the at the person. Okay, it was it got really ugly. And so finally I just stepped in. I just said, you know what, best you go because they even told her, hey, you gotta wear one mask for going safe safe way. She goes, I ain't wearing no F in mask. She goes, I paid to come here. So you know what? You don't tell me F this and F that. And the husband was trying to calm the wife down. So this other local lady came by. So I guess my point is it's gonna get to a point that innocent people won't get hurt. Because if we cannot stop this problem. I have a strange, funny feeling, and I, I hope I'm wrong, but people are going to start taking matters into their own hands. That's the, that's the biggest thing I worry about right now, that it's going to happen. And uh, I don't know I, I don't know what to do. I mean, I love our community, but you know, people are just frustrated. They're very, very frustrated. Yeah. One of the issues we got to keep in mind, which is what we've been told by the Attorney General, is that we do have a constitution, there is due process, there is the, <clears throat> the right to travel, and there are certain things that we cannot do unless they, they are tested and they are positive for COVID. If they didn't commit a crime or they're not positive, then we cannot just put them in a facility, we cannot do certain things because you know they haven't done anything. So that's that's the legal challenge that we have. And um, so that's why the governor and the AG is not, is saying we can't do some of these things. So if-, well, if, if, if Apparently the if, attorney general never talked to uh, uh, Josh Green because he said today that they were still discussing that possibility. Of right. testing. If they test positive, if they have COVID or whatever, then they can, they, she said they can, do, they can do it. But other than that, she said, you know, we're going to have all these lawsuits and so forth. I mean, she's going to have to defend us in court. But if you cannot prove that they were, that they were actually a threat to the to society, then you have all these constitutional issues. I'm just telling but, you, don't shoot the message. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> I've, yeah. I've, dealt with, I've dealt with county attorneys so many, for so many years, and it's frustrating because... <laughs> 
when you look at preventing one local resident from laying on a beach, when you look at preventing one local resident from leaving their house between nine and five at night, when you look at the, all the freaking prohibitions the local people get, and I'm not, again, this is not directed at the three of you. How can you say, or how can she say that that's unconstitutional when you've stripped the constitutional rights from every single freaking human on Kauai and Honolulu and Maui and the big island because it's a pandemic. And that, that is where I think the people get frustrated now. We're not putting them in jail. Well, I don't what, they're jail. Saying, what they're saying is that our stay at home versus the fact that these people come for a certain period of time and that we cannot force them for that period of time to stay in a place of our choosing to stay in unless we can show that they were, you know, because there's right of travel. I mean, there's those issues. And I'm not an attorney, so. Okay, um, so neither. I, guess, neither. I guess my uh, flip side to the question would be, um, yeah. if the trigger to get them quarantine is testing, how do we get to that point of testing then to, 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 to start that, to start that domino effect to take place? But because even if we test them, them, Charlie, even if we test them today and yeah. days later they can contract it or it might not show up, you know, they may have it, but it might not show up the day you test them. It'll show up two days later. So that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, so we're more. Unless, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you know, unless we do the rapid testing, even if they are symptomatic, we're not going to know for two weeks. They're going to be going home. You know what I mean? Even if they came coughing, fever, and everything, unless we give them the rapid testing that would happen in like a couple of hours or less, we're not going to know. As soon as they leave the airport, they're symptomatic. They're not going to take them anywhere. So that's the reason why, again, we spent money on this. And I keep bringing this up. And Senator Donovan De La Cruz said, we kind of keep going to ring around the roses on this one. But the simple fact is, why did we spend money back in December preparing Pearl Harbor yeah, to have these people that is symptomatic or possible symptomatic to go to this place in Pearl Harbor where they was going to have provided food and everything like that so that they don't spread it to the other people on the island? But again, like like I said, it change, everything changes, and now they don't even want to talk about the place that our taxpayers paid to renovate and get it ready for this uh, pandemic. You know, that's the sad part. It, it was it was paid for by taxpayers' money. Yeah. So the the fastest way we're going to be able to 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 ensure some kind of enforcement is the process at the airport, making sure that they fill out those forms, making sure that they, they give us the information that's required. And if they don't, if they don't give us that information that, that's required, that's when you can actually seek legal options. That's where we can make sure that there are some arrests, that there's some fines. And that's something that we know that the attorney general as well as DOT is in agreement with. We just have to clean up that process so it's, a, it's as tight as possible so that we can make sure that no one no one gets through the cracks over there and we can make and enforce this properly that that's going to be where that's where some that's where a lot of our focus has been making sure that that is correct yeah but once yeah, we yeah. go to thousands a day i don't know how we're going to do that that yeah that's a because it's not simple, scalable right now can i ask you a simple question and i hope one of you have the answers you folks are elected officials at senator how come how come you folks gotta tighten this up how come DOT, DOT don't think, uh, fast forward, how come they're not the ones really taking it under their belt and saying, hey, if it's transportation, this is our responsibility. we waiting we'll, for we'll... somebody else to tell them. <laughs> no, you, you, you know why? You know why? You know why exactly why? Yeah, I can tell you kind of my, my view why. Yeah, because our constituents, our people, and our family tell us, yeah, them, the problem is Linda or the governor, whoever's in charge of them, tells them that's the problem that's the disconnect we know as elected officials yeah from our constituents who we care about and keep asking us the same questions over and over but when we relate to them it's a disconnect because they're afraid if they're going to do something proactive and they didn't get permission from linda then they're going to get scoldings well who told you for do that oh, i'm the director oh, but, and so the governor never tell you for do that you see what i'm saying so when sometimes when you look at them, it look like they get deer, the kind of deer effect in the lights, their eyes open. They cannot, they cannot do them. Even if we ask them, they know the same thing we do because all of them, I know all of them have great common sense. 
But the problem right now, the disconnect is leadership. Who is actually giving the orders? General Hara, Linda, or the governor? Because it's not the directors from DOT, it's not the directors and the people that's running the airport, because when we talk to them, they, they all agree what we've seen. But then when we leave, whoever giving the, um, the orders from the top down, that's the disconnect. And once we can connect that dots, I think we'll be good at the airport. You know, I really think we would be okay. And we're gonna have to create something different for long-term, you know what I mean? There's gonna have to be something for long-term. So they don't have a plan. And even if they do have a plan and it sounds great and good, they tell us if Linda don't approve it or the governor, it's not gonna happen. So that's the reason why I don't even know why we pick directors and we, we, we uh, uh, vote them in uh, as directors when they cannot really direct, they're chastised by upper management. I, I, I want to ask a question. I don't know if you guys uh, can answer or not, but do you folks think, this is what I think, but what I think really doesn't matter. But do, you, do any of you think that the governor and, and his administration, his cabinet is getting a lot of pressure from the visitor industry to hurry up and get this quarantine lifted, to hurry up and get Hawaii open? And, and that would explain the reasons why they don't want to do the, the widespread testing, because obviously the more tests you do, the more numbers you get. Um, you think that that is playing a role in, in the decisions being made or not being made going forward? Well, we talked to HTA. They agreed that we're not ready to open. They agree yeah. that we have to yep. put a lot of things in place. And so seem to be on the same page. Also, the AG thought we're going to have this 14 day for a lot longer than the 31st. So, you know, what they're telling us, um, and even what Department of Health is saying, is not the same thing that's coming out of the governor's office. That's my in, my take, but I don't know what yeah. my colleague No, I, I would agree with that. I mean, we met with Sarah Park and, and Dr. Anderson right after we met with the airports and people, and, and she said that she would like to see the 14 day quarantine in place for as long as possible. Yeah. I, I just, I saw an article yesterday, I guess, Star Advertiser with the guy, it was his name, Vieira, the yeah. consultant to the visit industry. And he, it, it, I mean, he basically was saying, you know, they gotta put in a pressure for the state to get their planning going so they can start they can start looking at lifting the quarantine. So there's different factions within the visit industry. You got HTA, but you also got these other, and I, 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 I'll repeat what I was told today from a friend of mine that's a GM that said that that's what their owner group on the mainland told them, that they're, they're putting as much pressure as they can on, on the governor and to, to lift this quarantine. Only time will tell, only time will tell. Um, you know, the, the, okay, the, the sad part about it, we have the, we have the guys that is in the hotel industry Who's our family? Yeah, this is our family working there. Yeah? yeah. So when the head of, uh, you know, like Chris Tatum said, and same thing with the uh, Senator Kim said, when they're telling us this is not the time, yeah, they're not ready. You know, their people not ready. They're the people that work for the hotel industry. They're afraid. Housekeeping is afraid that they're gonna get sick and they're gonna take them to their families. And you guys gotta understand, you know, and I know a lot of housekeeping is not the young young generation in their 20s and 19, they're in their late 40s or early 50s and they're still doing housekeeping. You think how vulnerable they, they're gonna be, you know what I mean? They're not young uh, uh, teenagers that are doing that kind of work because the teenager's not gonna do that kind of housekeeping work and what the, what the hotel industry provides for us. So these guys are really are worried about them and they're all not healthy. They get diabetes, they get heart problems, they get high blood pressure. I mean, these are all the things that is in play but I understand that the, the you know the industry wants to open up and they're putting pressure on our governor. But to what extent, to what it's worth, that we're going to lose people in the hotel industry, and getting them to pass away and die, and then we're going to say, I, I, oh, I, we should have, could have, would have. We had Mufi. We had Mufi on our show. Uh, he was very adamant, you know, with the whole Aloha Later campaign, which is a fabulous campaign, telling the people do not come. So I, I was just curious if if any of you had. Well, let me, let me just throw this out to you guys. So one of the things I asked, because they said, oh, yeah, we called the airlines, we told the airlines. And I said, you know, I went online, and there's no there's nothing on that that says, if you're going to Hawaii, there's a 14-day quarantine. I said, none of the travel porters, portals have it on. And they go, oh, they didn't think of that. 
Why didn't they think of that? They only talk to the airlines. I mean, that's yeah. the kind of stuff, common yeah. sense stuff that I would think that's their industry that they would do. No, they didn't. They had to wait till we told them. Hey, uh, Mel. Hi. Let me ask the uh, senators uh, this uh, question. This is not a trick question because, uh, but you know, based on what the, the AG has said, has anybody thought of maybe calling in the last two AGs and get their opinions if they would read the same way this AG is reading this whole issue? Or would they have a different opinion? Just so you get one gauge, because they're it not seems- gonna say. They're not gonna say, they don't wanna undermine, because we've asked in the past, they don't wanna undermine the current AG. They're not gonna say. Okay. Even if they did, not gonna matter. Uh, you know what the sad part about is, I brought this up before, right? When, when President Trump uh, had, had, had made the ban from stopping uh, foreign travel, um, our state was one of the first ones to take him court and sue him for uh, o o overturning it, right? So I brought this up to the AG. It was so fast to jump into that and sue and saying that we're going to overturn him, then why can't we stop all essential travel? Why can't we? You know, so that's the reason why, to me, I sometimes I, I feel the word, the, the bottom word, the simplest word you can use. There's a lot of excuses. You know what I mean? Like I always tell everybody, we try something, and if it don't work, and they get mad at us, then we apologize. But how are we going to apologize when we never even try to do it? That's the part. We get stopped before we can get out of the gate. Yeah, we're going to get sued. They're going to threaten us, blah, blah, blah. But our people going to be safe. That's the thing. If you're not coming here as a medical doctor for business or any kind of important uh, uh, besides vacationing, then you should not come. And I think our AG should have went court and went to court and tell the airlines, this is what we're going to do. If we don't, then we're going to sue you. I mean, something, have some kind of plan. They don't. And that's the part I don't understand. Because that's what my constituents tell me. I remember when Trump was trying to close the airports, from having foreign travel, we, the state of Hawaii, sued Trump, and we we, we overthrown that, and we went go uh, against what he had uh, recommended. Now he's telling the governor, "You have a choice. You have a choice in what to do with your state." And then we sit on our hands, do nothing. That's the part it frustrates a lot of people in the community, and we want to know why. Really, do want to know why. So tomorrow. <laughs> we're going to have we're, we're going to have all, all the different agencies on so you know you get to you get to watch it all again and and probably hear some of the same questions being asked so okay. i think i think we're kind of ready for you guys uh what ukulele and guitar oh man I, you know damn i was i was thinking you know these guys already saw it you know so they're not going to want to see it again i was going to ask charlie for play one regular song again like he did last night yeah on the guitar any, any closing comments from any of you? Um, I was just going to say, too, you know, any, anything you guys like wrap up with? We went 15 minutes over time. Any, you guys, the floor is yours. Take your, take your chance. You know, well, I just want to thank the committee. They work really, really hard. I mean, and it's personal. You know, it's really personal for so many of them because of like what Senator said, it's family, it's friends, it's constituents. Uh, they're very concerned. And I, you know, that's where I think we get so heated and passionate in the committee. I mean, sometimes we're criticized for being uh, maybe too direct and too passionate, but because everyone takes it to heart and because it's so real, everyone puts in an inordinate, inordinate amount of effort to, to help move this along. It takes a lot of energy to get the departments to put some of these policies in place. And I just wanna thank the committee and, and the Senate president for creating the committee because we, we hope that we're really doing our part to make Hawaii safer. I want the, the staff, I want to thank Donovan staff, the Ways and Means staff, and all of our staff, because, you know, you think what you see is us, but all the preparation, calling in everybody, getting it to come in a certain time, getting the room ready, doing the reports, and we have it online, we're transparent. Um, all that does not happen without the kind of work and overtime that these people are putting in. Uh, in addition, we want to thank all our staff that have volunteered as over at DLIR to help process yeah. all the unemployment claims. We know that there's still a lot of people out there didn't get paid, but because of the hundreds of volunteers from, from the legislature, you know, more people have gotten paid because of that. So um, I have to really take my hats off to them because they go in on weekends and stay till late doing those things. 
you know, and, and I just wanted to uh, echo the same thing as Senator Kim and Senator De La Cruz uh, is saying, uh, without all of that, um, you know, like we cannot do what we do. But I want to just let everybody know out there in Facebook land, um, whatever we're doing out there and the passion that we show out there and the love that we show out there, working with these uh, directors and different departments, um, just take everything with a grain of salt. We don't have no hate or no animosity or anger towards anybody, but we don't feel if we don't ask the hard questions and go out there without doing our job for our state of Hawaii, which was which very important to us. And we take it very seriously. So like I said, we give a love, a lot of love and a lot of aloha to everybody that comes before us because we know it's not easy. You know, it's not easy coming before us, but you know what? When we leave there, like I said, at the end of the day, we can agree to disagree, but we still live aloha, love aloha, and be aloha. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what? Um, I often get accused for being too passionate or criticized, I should say. But you know, we're not talking about a subdivision. We're not talking about a park. We're not talking about a highway. We're not talking about a typical CIP project that people support and some sure. don't. We're talking about a pandemic. We're talking about something that kills. We're talking about something that can hurt our loved ones, our kupuna, our keiki, our relatives, our loved ones. That's what we're talking about. And I think that's why the passion is, is so deep because it, this is for real. And uh, we, we are at such a good place statewide, you know, with one or two cases a day, um, deaths have, have been pretty much limited. You know, of, of course, we don't see any of them. We got 17. That's, that's still a lot. But we are at a place where we can actually uh, do well. But the one variable is the visitor. That, that's the problem. And if we don't get a handle on that, we can easily become the worst state in the country um, with just a couple of major clusters. And that's why, uh, that's why the passion, that's why the passion. So anyway, you know, so we get a lot of questions. I, I, uh, Donovan, I'll ask you, and this is gonna be the last question. Okay. The, people, I have seen a few questions and I apologize because I, I was supposed to ask this earlier. 706 employees not working, staying home, is that true? That, that was true. Uh, we don't have the accurate number right now and, and we should probably go ask the De Department of okay. Human Resources that. But they had, they had about 600 some odd people um, who were at home and were unable to work from home. And the so last, that's where the, oh, go ahead, Donna. The last report I got, they said um, 255 were still available to be de redeployed. Yeah, um, so that's what, what, that's what the committee has been pushing is that go to Department of Health, help with the contact tracing, go to Department of Labor, help, help with UI claims. I mean, there's different departments and agencies that need help. And instead of us having to contract work or have overtime, we can redeploy people. And the unions have actually been quite supportive of that. You know, oftentimes the director said, well, well, we're still in negotiations with the union, but the unions have told us many times and they showed us even the, the correspondence back and forth that they support uh, doing whatever it takes, especially in this pandemic. Thank you very much. Charlie. <laughs> On this island, we do it all in style. From the mountain to the ocean, from the windward to the leeward side. We ain't gonna flatten no curve. No, we gotta flatten the curve. Charlie, we gotta flatten the curve, Charlie. Everybody come here, they say piss off. They say piss off. Who, who said piss off? <laughs> okay, you like that? Piss off because we're not flattening the curve, so. Okay, here we go. Just be, be okay. Here we go. Hey, hey, tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night, Mr. Chip Bayhuth from the Sheraton Poipu, we're going to get a general manager's perspective on this whole crisis. It's going to be hella interesting. So make sure you guys are here tomorrow night, seven o'clock. Senators, you guys welcome to tune in. You guys take care. God bless. Appreciate it. You guys stay Thank safe. Thank you. Hello, guys. Thank we'll you. see you guys tomorrow Aloha. at your committee meeting. Aloha. Aloha. Be safe. Aloha. Be safe.